At some point, I was playing around with my daughter with the clay, and um, I was, you know, just like boom, 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 making a little, little deer, and you know, then I made another one and another one, and I, I, I saw, wow, this is interesting. I am now a machine. Uh, Marcel Wanders is for sure one of the most talented and original designers of our generation. He never looked at objects the way other people did. He always kind of questioned the function of the objects, the shape of the objects, and what they may be in the future. Well, that is uh, the not a chair, and uh, it's been a very important piece for me. It, it, it connected, I think, technology and uh, so high high tech and, and very low tech like craft. I work in a lot of disciplines and uh, with a lot of materials and technology, but at the end of the line, that you know, I, I work with one material especially, which is the gray mass. I change the gray mass of people's heads. That is my material. There's one idea here. It's a rocking chair. It's not a practical solution for the sitting problem. It's there because it's there. What's interesting these days is everyone's trying to draw these lines between art and sculpture, architecture. If it's a piece of sculpture that you can sit in, is it sculpture or is it furniture? People think of it as applied arts versus fine arts. I think Ron is one of those pioneers that's really blurring uh, the lines between those distinctions. The design is to impose your will on a material through a process to perform a function of some sort. Sometimes you see a material in a process and that inspires you to do things. And sometimes you have an idea of something you want to do and you have to look for a material or a process that will allow you to do it. The Vignellis are the most notable and probably the most versatile couple in the design arts today. Working individually and as a team for the past 47 years, the Vignellis have not only created some of the world's most familiar logos, they have also designed award-winning furniture and forums, buildings and bags, exhibit spaces and typefaces. Originally trained as architects, they met in architecture school, the Vignellis fervently believe in the philosophy of one of their mentors, the great Italian architect Ernesto Rogers. As Massimo explains, One of the things that he was preaching all the time was that an architect should be able to design everything from a spoon to a city. Nothing is more dangerous to mankind <laughs> than specialization. Perfectionism is far from my code. I uh, want to try everything and pick myself up when I fall. My feeling is uh, to trust gut reaction. It was a time I, I was so focused and running so fast, I really didn't know what that was. But uh, as an architectural student, we uh, did a material study course and uh, we studied something about textiles and wove two afternoons. And I liked working with my hands and with real materials, making a real piece of cloth and eventually decided, well, I could be a, a weaver instead of an architect. My parents weren't keen on that out the end. They assumed I'd always be poor. <laughs> and independent, uh, it turned out better than they expected. Critics and patrons around the world agree that Lino Taliapietra 
is among today's most important and influential glass artists. Maestro Talia Pietra was born in 1934 on the island of Murano, the centuries-old center for Venetian glassmaking. He began his apprenticeship at the age of 11, and by the time he was 21, he had achieved the rank of maestro. And in the 1980s, he made the transition from a traditional master glassblower and designer to an independent studio artist, focusing on his own unique artistic expression. Sometimes the glass tell you what you must do, because as this one is true, I always I have this kind of feeling when I make some pieces, the piece told me, do like that, do like this, it's better like this, don't do like this, always. The glass speaks. The glass speaks. I found a form that I like, and then I've been continuing that for over 30 or 40 years, and people keep thinking, well, you're doing the same thing. I said, no, I'm not, because every piece is different. A different time, and different mood, and different glaze, different firing, and the expression of the piece is different, because as you get older, you think differently. It doesn't matter to me what they say anyway. I'm gonna do what I want. I like the way uh, the artist and the materials come together in Toshiko's work, the clay and the person. There's a kind of bliss to be found in that, because for once we feel at one with the world. Uh, you know, the, 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 the hand is blind, the uh, eye cannot touch, uh, but in her work, uh, for at least a moment, those limitations seem transcended. My, my interest has always been in materials. Materials, I think, are what uh, urge me on. You know, the meanings that materials have and their various uh, uh, properties or characters, you know, are very important to me. Who would think that you could sort of create a shimmering effect that looks rich and looks very um, elaborate and very embellished from l the uh, metal caps and tops from liquor bottles. So I think it's that kind of dialogue, you know, between surface treatment and the humbleness of the materials that really resonates with the public when they see Elle's work. The way that Elle has taken his colors, his palette, and his background and transformed that history through the humblest of materials into great works of art is astonishing, absolutely astonishing. Born in Bogota, Olga was first attracted to architecture. Her fascination with space and structure is clearly apparent. But in 1954, while studying at the Cranbrook Academy of Art in Michigan, she found two new loves, her future husband, the painter and sculptor Jim Amaral, and Fiber. He estado habitada por el color desde mi obra más temprana from my earliest days to my most recent pieces, I have always been inhabited by color. When I began experimenting with gold leaf, I not only gained immediacy and intensity with color, I found I could use it to change the three-dimensional traits of fiber itself. A unique combination of weaving, painting, and sculpture have made her a favorite of private collectors and art consultants. And her work is in the collections of major museums worldwide, 